in this particular uh, video nugget, we want to talk about the fact that Team Expansion, we, we believe that missions is more like high adventure than it is an academic classroom environment. Uh, you know, people come up through Bible college, they take, uh, they even can major in missions at some Bible colleges. So when you graduate from a Bible college and you have your major in missions, it makes it sound like you're totally prepared. And I happen to do that. I have my, my major in Bible actually and a minor in missions. Then when I went to grad school, I majored in a master's degree in missions. So you would think that I would have learned the stuff that you have to do. But I can tell you from my own life, beyond a shadow of a doubt, so so much of what missions is involved with is stuff that you cannot possibly read in an anthropology textbook. It's learned out there on the side of a cliff. When you're hanging there by your fingers and your feet are there and your legs starting to quiver a little bit because you're hanging. Now, you're not actually on a cliff, we hope. Uh, but that's what you feel like sometimes in a metaphorical sense. You've given your life for this and you're hanging on just with all the, the, the possible force that you can muster. But it's tough. It's hard. And that's hard to simulate in a classroom. So really, if you could go on a whitewater rafting trip, if you could go on an outward bound experience, you know, the kind where you're there on the cliff with somebody and you look over your buddy and you say, we paid for this? You know, it's like, do we pay to have to go through this quivering of our, of our legs? So it was interesting because uh, Robert Coles got this little book uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a great little book. It's something we would recommend. In fact, it's called Survival Kit for Overseas Living. He did this study on what are three things that you need in order to be successful when you cross in another culture. He didn't talk about anthropology. He, he didn't find any connection or correlation with things like, did you grow up overseas or anything? Here's what he found. The first thing was, can you laugh? A sense of humor. Now this is an actual quantitative uh, study that he did. Are you able to laugh at your mistakes? The second thing he found was, are you able to have a low goal I'm going, to, I'm going to write this up, a low goal to task orientation. What we mean by that is, uh, you know how in the United States, uh, Western world, sometimes we, we make a list of what we want it to do. It might be like a grocery list or a task list for the day. You know, you get your day off and you have all your things, you want to clean up the garage, you know, work on the deck or whatever. We make a to-do list. People that are going cross-culturally have to learn to hold that to-do list at arm's length. Doesn't mean you have to completely trash it, but you have to hold it at arm's length and sort of separate yourself from it because that 10 task to-do list in a cross-cultural situation might become an impossible task because there's so many new uh, challenges that have to do with the fact that you're now working out of your home culture. It might mean that you have to stand in line for four hours to pay the light bill with cash in person because you can't mail the check or because they don't use credit cards. That's what happened to me in Team Expansion's first field in Uruguay. And the first time I stood in that four hour line, I was miserable. I, you know, tapping my foot, just the classical type A behavior thinking, what a waste of time. People back in the States are donating to Team Expansion and Today, their donations are such waste. You know, I mean, I felt terribly guilty about it. The next time I went back, I had rethought it. I took my language learning notes, and as we got in line, I suddenly realized, wow, these people are going to be here for four hours. It didn't take very long, just a few minutes before it was like Sesame Street Live there in the line. They were drilling me on words, and by the time we got up and, and I actually started to pay, I thought, I wonder if I should go back and get in line again and do this all over again because it was so effective. I had free language learning help for four hours without having to pay a dime. And the people in the line had absolutely nothing else to do. Just a change in my head radically transformed my cross-cultural experience. And that's why you've got to have a low goal to task orientation and learn to sort of ride the wave uh, outward bound style.
We talk about the concept of acceptance. We have people say the word over and over again to, to learn to hear what it's like. We say, let's just say acceptance out loud. Let's just try that with the group we have here. Can you guys say, I mean in real life, can you hear ready? One, two, three, acceptance. And the first time people say it, it's usually kind of like that. And then we say, oh, come on, you can do better. Let's put our, our whole diaphragm behind it. Oh, get ready to belt it out. <clears throat> okay, ready? One, two, three, acceptance. acceptance. And we keep working with them until it gets louder and louder. Just sort of a mental device. But really the truth of the matter is, if we will just practice it, it might not be wrong, it might just be different. Paying the light bill in cash, there's nothing wrong with that. It was just so different for me. And I had to get used to that inside of here, instead of uh, having some class on it in my Bible college. I don't blame my graduate school because they didn't teach me about paying the light bill with cash. What I blame is myself for not accepting that uh, right off the bat. The third thing that Coles found is granting people the ability to fail. Uh, not only the nationals, but teammates and oneself. If you are living according to some very high expectations, maybe because you've been very successful in business, you might maybe be in for a bit of a shock because you'll get there and whether it's short term or long, things will go wrong. And after you spend a week and you've put the foundation in the wrong place because somebody didn't have the drawing, you feel like you're a failure and your heart is downcast. You think you've wasted money. That's why in missions in general and in cross-cultural work overall, Coles found that if people will grant themselves the ability to fail, they are more successful cross-cultural workers. Remember, while you've been in the process of building that foundation, you've learned things. Well, this is one place not to put the foundation. <laughs> you've learned to talk and to get along with the people that are with you. You learn to make sure that you get the plan first before you start the foundation. Hopefully we remember that along the way. Now to kind of point this out, we're going to lay over the top here. A, a picture of uh, what Ted Ward developed at the University of Michigan uh, coping posture model and as you can see here uh, Ted Ward talked about that when you and you enter any kind of cross-cultural problem, there will be cultural differences. And those differences might be uh, uh, worldview related, they might be language, they might be uh, uh, something cultural, but no matter what, those cultures are inevitable. Those cultural differences are inevitable. Inevitably also, you're gonna have some frustration some confusion. It's inevitable. You will not be able to travel cross-culturally without confusion. What Ted Ward asked is, what if you went in with an openness and an acceptance and a trust so that when you encountered those differences you had anticipated them and what you decided to do was make a choice. You decided to observe and listen and inquire. Almost like, well, I planned on the fact that I'd have these confusions and so now I'm I'm counting on the fact that they're going to be there it's like you kind of give yourself permission to be tense you give yourself permission to have been embarrassed because that's what cross-cultural travel cross-cultural work will always bring about and if you stick to that top track as you can see here in the illustration uh, Ted Ward uh, felt that you could develop rapport and understanding with the people by contrast if you go in with suspicion and fear and prejudice like what if I had said why do these people have to pay the light bill with cash? What if they never heard of a check? Why if we just bring down some Americans, we could shake the, we could teach them a thing or two and you know, whip this culture into efficiency. You know, that's kind of the way we have sort of a, a, a type A behavior kind of mentality sometimes. If you go in with that, then what you end up doing is criticizing. You begin rationalizing why you're criticizing and you begin withdrawing from the culture. Maybe the next time to pay light bill, you just don't want to do it so you hire a national to go stand in a line for you. Now there's nothing wrong with hiring nationals to do things, to hiring our local brothers to do things, but there is a, a somehow a, a pattern of that so much that little by little you're withdrawing from the culture and that produces alienation and in, in uh, the end it produces a certain kind of isolation that has now built a wall between you and the culture and what we want to say in team expansion is that we would like for you to be uh, integrated in the culture so well that you don't need a translator, you don't need an interpreter, uh, you have completely invested, you've completely embraced the culture and the differences that are there. Uh, one of the ways you can do this is by journaling. 
you can write Dear Diary, you know, and, and maybe Dear God, and you write, write your journal as a prayer, uh, but, but more than anything else, it's a sense of accepting those three key factors that Coles found. Sense of humor, low goal task orientation, and granting the ability to fail not only to the local people there, but also to your teammates and to oneself. And if you do that and you view missions as high adventure, I think we'll all be a lot more effective. That's what this nugget's about. <laughs>